Hello my Soccer Universe for a video that I've been meaning to make for quite a while but always something came in between. Now I'm not sure if the timing is the most perfect one because the bidding on what is now sure to become the most expensive football shirt in history is not quite finished yet uh, but it will finish on the 4th of May and yeah that's the i will probably post it afterwards because i want to give you here the winning bid <laughs> how much it was at the time of shooting it's still only the reserve bid met which is four million pounds which still is far and away the most expensive football shirt ever beating out Pelé's 1970 final shirt by who which i still don't get i mean it was a different must have been a different time this was only only two hundred thousand dollars now with four million pounds it's uh <laughs> it is staggering however and that's what the video is about the story behind this jersey is one not only from a different time but an absolutely extraordinary story um that uh, I think deserves telling, although many of you shirt enthusiasts probably have heard it. But if you haven't heard it and you're hearing it now from me, I think it's well worth. We all know Sotheby's are auctioning off Maradona's, if you want to call it Hand of God shirt, you want to call it Goal, Goal of the Century shirt. It is the shirt that he wore on the 22nd of June in 1986 at the Azteca in a game against England, a game that was fraught with political tensions because the Falkland Wars have just been over for a few years. The Argentinians trying to downplay uh, the importance, of course, they wanted to beat England and all that kind of stuff. So that is all the background. However, what makes this shirt special in the first is the obvious one. Two of the most, if not the most famous goals in World Cup history. And I honestly, I what else comes to mind? Literally, I can think of the header in the final uh, 1970 or maybe the 4-1, but that was a 4-1. The game was decided at the point of Brazil. Uh, maybe Pelé's goal in the 1958 final. Um, I think that it's the Brazilian third goal. That is another one of those that is just unbelievable. But Maradona scored two. Yes, the other two were in the World Cup final. This one was only a quarterfinal. But a quarterfinal that was played in broad daylight, broadcast around the world and containing the, I say it now, the two most infamous goals in World Cup history. Infamous and famous. The two most talked about goals in World Cup history. There's one more. The goal at Wembley, the third goal uh, that I think uh, should count in there as well. So, but this is uh, this is the rarefied air we're talking about. We're talking, of course, about the one nil, the hand of God goal, where uh, Steve Hodge kind of plays a dodgy ball back to Shilton, and Maradona leaps up like this, hits the hand, goes in the net. Referee doesn't see it. Goal counts. Ha! Glad that we didn't have VAR back then. I love VAR, yeah? But I, if VAR was there, we would not talk about this moment at all. And now it is one of the most famous goals in history. And then just three minutes later, uh, he takes the ball. And that goal is so incredible. And yes, I know Messi scored a similar one against Getafe. However, first of all, compare Getafe, England, Copa del Rey, World Cup. I think it was also quarterfinals. So, you know, it's a different level. Slaloms through half the English, uh, the full English team, more, more, more or less, and finishes it off. And that's the shirt we're talk, talking about. Seemingly, there have been a little bit of controversy that the shirt, there were two shirts that he has worn, that they, uh, the Maradona family was claiming is the one from the first half. Sotheby's has a very, very thorough process done. And if you, uh, they put a little bit up on their website, which uh, is well worth your time. I hope at the time this post is still up, where they actually show what they have been using to really uh, identify that this is his jersey. Um, before we get to the story about how this jersey was made, it's also kind of interesting how Steve Hodge uh, came into the possession of this jersey. Because, uh, you know, the England players didn't realize that they were cheated at that moment, most of them, if not all of them. 
They just thought, yeah, okay, we lost the game to England. Yeah, fair, fair play. Steve Hodge said, I might not be able. I think he was playing for Forest at the time. I might not be back at this stage. Let me just grab a souvenir. Let's try and get Maradona. And at first, uh, he couldn't get him because they were celebrating. But then uh, in the players' tunnel, he met Maradona. He, he just made like this. They exchanged shirts. And so he was in possession of what was already very quickly becoming the most cherished item. Now, the fun thing is that he realized then what Maradona had done, that he was cheated, and he stored it away in his sock drawer until he realized, oh, that might actually be worth something. It has been then in a museum in Manchester where I actually still think it should belong. I am not very much in favor of uh, some private person now owning this shirt. Honestly, I... That would be one expense where I think FIFA should go all out. Get this freaking shirt and put it into their museum in Zurich. Yes, they will charge you uh, many, but get it at least at a place where people can admire the shirt. And I would say that the FIFA museum uh, would be the perfect place for that one. That shirt deserves to be seen. But what makes this shirt even more extraordinary than uh, already these stories, the goals, the way that this was, um, the, uh, that it came into Stephen Hodge's possession, uh, the way he was storing it, and, and so on, is the shirt itself. It's, and I'm wearing our, our, our Argentina waged uh, jersey, and I think because of this shirt, I actually would love to have a similar blue Argentina away jersey now as well, although I like my dark blue a little bit better. Not this shade, but more this shade of the sleeve cut, in any case. Uh, it is a very 80s looking jersey. However, um, the supplier at the time was Le Coq uh, Sportif. And they uh, had a nice, you know, for the Mexican heat, they had uh, an, a home jersey with the latest technology. Uh, but their away jersey was still largely cotton based in 1986. Yes, cotton based. Watch actually uh, uh, also like Italian shirts at, at the time had a very thick ma 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 material. And so Argentina had to play in the round of 16 Uruguay in those cotton based away shirts. And if you look at them, they are soaked. They got heavy. They were uncomfortable for the, um, for, uh, the team. And so um, the Argentinian team tried to get an edge for the game against England. You know, it is the game. And they knew they have to play in their away jerseys again. And they thought if we play at the midday heat at the Azteca in those jerseys, this will be to our disadvantage. So they sent out their kitment, scouring all over Mexico City. Of course, now you have to find Le Coq Sportif stores for a replacement shirt. And this guy went out and I think it was only a release for the Mexican market at the time. Uh, he got out and found uh, two, uh, two or three shirts as far as I remember. And then kind of Maradona said, yeah, that's a nice shirt. We're going to beat England in that one. So he took this blue shirt with a deep collar, white collar, uh, white outlined collar, and with kind of this shadow pinstriping. I have it here right in front of me. And then to top it off, to make it a proper Argentine shirt, they, they had the crest, the Argentina crest, old style crest. It's not the crest that, uh, that, that was won in the World Cup because that one was more like this one with the laurel with around it. This is just the AFA logo, very elong elongated. Um, I from, you know, 80, 82, if not sooner, they had this hand stitched on. And this is where you can actually tell the, de the, the, the detail because the Maradona shirt, you see the yellow seam and the, it goes a little bit uh, freely on top. Uh, it's an absolute, it's, it's just a, a quick job to uh, get a shirt ready that is lighter to wear. That was actually made of poly, 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 and will not get soaked in sweat. And to top it off, and this is my absolute favorite part of this shirt. Look at the numbers. They're not white. They're not any, 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 any. Those are American football numbers in silver. Shiny. Coming kind of powder, powder in. You can see how, how, how this wears off. This is a, a thrift shop shirt that they were wearing. And this shirt scratched, scraped together in the, last, in the last few days before the game. They needed to buy the lot. They, had, they really got out for the sweat uh, to get this going. And they play in that one. 
and this becomes the most iconic shirt it's just one of the craziest stories out there and what a different time this was just imagine yes the last time we had to make a, a last minute change to a shirt was when Spain had to play the Netherlands in 2014 where FIFA demanded they play in a white shirt they had to come up with one that was easily done yeah but here the team had to come up with it because the technology of the away shirt was not on par with the one on the home shirt it is just one of those things uh, where you know fates meet in a way you get a cheapish cheapish jersey that is now the most expensive jersey in history and now what's even more is i mean the shirt itself yes it's an 80s shirt but uh let's let's be honest it's not the prettiest uh, uh, it has nothing special about this shirt the price of this shirt is all about maradona and the legend that maradona is there's a reason i put this jersey up there i um you know maradona to me you may say he might not be uh, the most uh, savory, uh, you know, the normal cleanest figure and uh, all the scandals and so on. The just, there are, I even think Pelé is not getting up there. Pelé is too much of a yes man. He was, uh, probably Pelé was potentially a better footballer. Cannot judge different eras, really. But just the personality that Maradona was, this larger than life. I mean, they're making, there's the church of Maradona in there. This is why this church is there. Maradona, I think to this day, even now, two years, almost two years, that's one and a half years after his passing, is still probably the most talked about football player ever. No Cristiano, no Messi, nobody like them. It is Maradona all the way for me. Yes, I was lucky enough to see Maradona play, but not at his height. Yes, maybe I saw him at his height at the World Cup Final 86. It's the first football game that I ever saw, but uh, it is not one that I do remember. Maradona is, a, Maradona is truly next level. He is one of those that transcend the sport. And there are very, very few of those. And uh, he may not... If he would have had his drug habits in check, if he would have been had a better fitness regime and so on, if he would have had the resources that, for instance, um, uh, Ronaldo and the Messi have now, he could have elongated his, his uh, career. He actually played for quite a while, to be honest. Um, watch the Maradona documentary where you see how uh, all the drugs and how uh, you know to get him fit for a game not the ones that that, 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 that he was taking but the painkillers and, and, and so on. there is so much about him to tell I have made a video on Maradona on my channel as well this is what this shirt is all about this is he has worn this in his greatest hour and I think it's fitting I don't think that the Pelé shirt is valued correctly the Maradona shirt, though, is to me a step above it. But that's my personal opinion. What do you think about it? Um, lastly, final thing, when I saw that it's going up to be bidding, I went to my wife, kind of, can we please extend our budget by, and you, are you, I see already her scary look on the face, and I said, yeah, about 7 million. <laughs> Euros. <laughs> look, you should have seen the look on the face. I love you. I love you. <laughs> yes, it's it's an amazing shirt. But I think I would be fine if I had just a replica of it. But not even that. It's just I haven't seen the game live, and this is one. Thing. Any case. Let me know what you think about this jersey. Where should it where, where should belong? Is it worth the price? Uh, what do you think about Maradona? All of those things. Drop a line below. Most expensive shirt. Uh, let's call it the Hand of God shirt. Although I think to me it should be more about the goal of the century than the Hand of God. But this is depending on where you live. English speaking media will always call it the Hand of God shirt. Around here it's definitely more the goal of the century shirt. In any case. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!